Hey River Life fam, uh, it's good to see you from my house to yours. I've been spending a lot more time in my house lately these days as I'm sure you have as well. And it's led me to think about some principles of how to stay connected to Jesus and his mission even when I'm stuck at home. To start today, I'm gonna to do a little illustration using these three containers. So this first container represents God and all that he wants to do amongst us on earth. Usually it's my Chemex filled with really good coffee, but today this represents God and what he wants to do on earth. I could say a lot about this container and all that God wants to do, but for today, a good general way to talk about this is the fruit of the Spirit. God is the originator of love, and God wants to pour his love on us and the whole world. The same is true of the other fruit of the Spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God is the originator of these good gifts, and when we stay connected to him, he gives us these gifts and fills us with the fruit of his spirit. This cup represents us. God wants us to be connected to him. And when we're connected to him, we're filled up. Now, God does not want us just to stay filled up and satisfied with that. God has a purpose in filling us up. The purpose is that we would pour ourselves out for the good of the world around us. The world around us is represented by this container. It's the closest thing I had to a globe. <laughs> In Philippians 2.17, the Apostle Paul describes himself as a drink offering that is poured out for the good of those around him. In God's infinite wisdom, he chooses to fill us up the fruit of the Spirit, so that we might be poured out for the good of the world. One of the main ways that we get burned out in the Christian life is when we try to give and serve out of an empty cup. When we keep trying to give what we have and we have not received from God, we break apart and we burn out. Pete Scazzaro reminds us that we can only give what we have received. It is of utmost importance that we understand this relationship, how we receive life from God, and how we receive the fruit of the Spirit from God, so that we can give out of the abundance of what we have received. So the primary way that Christians talk about this relationship, of how God imparts life to people, is through specific practices called spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines do not give us life themselves. There's nothing magic about them. But rather, they create avenues or pathways for God to give life to us. In his classic book, The Celebration of Discipline, which I have a copy right here, Richard Foster breaks up spiritual disciplines, these pathways of how God gives life to us, into three categories. The first category is the inward disciplines. These are spiritual practices that take us inward to our hearts and minds. Disciplines like prayer, fasting, study, and meditation. The second category is the outward disciplines. These are disciplines we live out with our bodies or we put ourselves into specific places or settings. These disciplines are simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. The third category is the corporate disciplines. These are disciplines we can only do in community with other people, like corporate worship, corporate dis uh, celebration, confession, and guidance. What's unique about the time we're living in right now is that we're not able to be physically together. So the corporate disciplines are not able to be practiced in the ways we're accustomed to. We find ourselves having the rug pulled out from under us, unable to meet together physically. And as great as Zoom calls are, and I've been on a lot of them these days, they aren't the same as being in a room together, giving someone you care about a hug, or looking someone in the eyes. 
Most people I talk to, myself included, rely heavily on the corporate disciplines for our spiritual life. My spiritual life is anchored in what I experience at worship on Sunday mornings and how I'm given life throughout the week through friendships and relationships with other believers in the body of Christ. And that's a good thing. Corporate uh, disciplines are necessary and they're God's gift to us. But they're only one way that we connect with God. In fact, they're only one of the three categories. So this season of being apart gives you a great opportunity to find a healthier rhythm that will balance out your corporate disciplines with the inward and outward disciplines. The one I've been thinking about a lot is solitude. Solitude is when we intentionally, or in the case of the coronavirus, unintentionally, pull away from other people to be alone with God. Solitude can happen on a walk or in your bedroom. The heart of it is to pull away from people and pull near to God. Whether you like it or not, you are experiencing more opportunity for solitude than you ever have before. And this can be a good thing. Jesus often practiced solitude to balance out his communal life with his disciples and the activism of him pouring himself out for the good of the world. So here's a few passages where we see this principle of solitude of Jesus going away to be with God so that he could be poured out for the good of the world. After healing many people, here's what it says Jesus did in Mark 135. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. As Jesus was gaining popularity amongst the people, we see how he responded in Luke 5, 15 through 16. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And when the disciples came back from doing ministry, here's what happened in Mark 6, 31 through 32. Then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, <clears throat> he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. These are just a couple of the many examples of Jesus going away into solitude to pull away from people and pull near to God. Now you introverts out there are celebrating. You think this is a great message. And the extroverts, well, you've probably already turned off the live stream. I hope not, because introverted or extroverted, whether it comes naturally or it doesn't, for a healthy, well-balanced spiritual life, we must take time to be alone with God. A few years ago, I experienced this firsthand. I was living an unbalanced life. I was pastoring an inner city house church network in St. Paul, and my doing for God heavily outweighed my being with God. I was leading out of an empty cup. I didn't have anything really good to offer. I lost the ability to hear God's voice I became reactive in how I responded to my family, my coworkers, and the people in my church. I was having trouble sleeping, and I was consumed with anxiety. I took what's called a sabbatical, an intentional time away from some of the corporate disciplines of church life to reconnect with God on a more individual basis through solitude. And after a time of seeking solitude with God, I began to experience a profound healing that would eventually affect every area of my life. I began to hear God's voice and experience God's presence again. The avenues of spiritual disciplines were beginning to yield fruit in my life. It wasn't easy, and there have been plenty of missteps and mistakes along the way, but I was forever changed. I learned this lesson the hard way, that in order to pour ourselves out for others, we must be filled by God first. And this filling, it's not just a one-time thing. Any time that I start to pour myself out for others, I need to come back and get refilled by God through the avenue of spiritual disciplines. Then I'd be able to pour myself out for others. So I want to challenge you this week 
to think of your time of self-quarantine and social distancing as an opportunity to draw near to God. You didn't choose this time of solitude, but here we are, stuck in our houses. Are you going to use this opportunity to foster a healthier relationship with God? Can you imagine how our families would be changed if we took time in the midst of this to be filled up with the goodness of God? Can you imagine how our neighborhoods would be transformed if we were regularly experiencing the love, joy, and peace of God then pouring ourselves out for the good of our city? So practically, how do you go about this? What should you do? I'm a big believer in creating a regular rhythm for how one practices spiritual disciplines. The first thing you should do is make a plan for your time of solitude. Pick a time of day when you're going to draw away from others so that you can draw near to God. Talk to your family or those who you're living with about this plan and ask them to support you in it. If you have young kids at home like I do, you need to make a plan for them too because as soon as you start to draw away to be near with God, they'll try to come with you. So think of a way for them to spend those minutes so that you can really uh, engage with the Lord in a deep and meaningful way. Next, once you have a time and a plan, you need to think of what you're going to do. I was reminded this week that many of us went through this Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course and you got familiar with these day-by-day -day books by Pete Scazzaro. Maybe now is a great time to re-engage some of those disciplines that you maybe have forgotten or not practiced as regularly these last six months since we've taken this course together. Maybe this is a chance for you to think about those rhythms that you're trying to set up and reset those so that your soul might be restored through solitude. If you don't have a book like that, maybe you want to pick your favorite devotional or work through one of the Gospels. I just want to encourage you in your time of pulling away to be with God to take time to listen and sit in his presence in silence. There's going to be mistakes and missteps along the way. You'll have a rocky start, you'll miss a day, but that's okay. Keep pursuing God. God has good gifts for you in this, and he wants you in this time when you're pulled away from people to draw really near to him so that he can pour out his fruit of the Spirit into your life. Now more than ever, the world needs people who have real hope, that can offer something of real substance to heal the hurting all around us that's coming from fear, anxiety, and isolation. You may be tempted to keep pouring out from an empty cup, like this. Today, can you take some time to receive life from God? Spiritual disciplines, those are simply the avenue that God gives us to receive life from him. And, we, and when we pursue God through spiritual disciplines, he gives his life to us so that we can pour our lives out for the good of the world. So today, may God bless you richly as God restores your soul through solitude.